Hi, Jiro doers, and welcome back to this video on analytic accounting. Analytic accounting gives an overview of your cost and revenue and helps you track them. You can then analyze the profitability of a project or a department, for example. Here at Bloom, we use analytic accounting to help us forecast our budget and make informed decisions. Let's check out how it works in our database. So first, don't forget to enable the analytic accounting option. And to do that, we'll go into accounting, configuration, and settings, and look for analytic. You can see we already have it done. Then we can access our analytics by going into accounting, configuration, and down to our analytic accounts. The analytic accounts can be set on journal items to track individual costs and revenue, and then the analytic plans group the analytic accounts to provide some structure. So here we have our accounts, and let's actually create an analytic plan. And we'll start by clicking New to create a new analytic plan, and we'll call this one Utilities. So a parent link here would be used in case of a more complex analytic structure. For the default applicability, we can choose either optional, mandatory, or unavailable. And this field determines when we can or when we have to use this analytic plan on journal items. We'll set this one to optional. And we can even pick a nice color if we want some more visual clarity. Then in some very specific cases, we might want the applicability to behave differently from these default settings. So there are some fine tuning options here at the bottom. We can use this domain field to change the applicability for certain types of records, like vendor bills, for example. And then we can be even more precise and apply this change only when using specific accounts or accounts that start with a specific prefix. Then we can limit it to show only a specific product category, or rather to apply only on a specific product category. And then we can set the applicability. So we want this to be mandatory for vendor bill lines that start with the account one, two, whatever and for this product category. We're not actually going to do that, so we'll just delete this line and save. I see there's a subplan smart button there. What is it? So you're right, Anne Francoise. The subplan smart button allows you to create a parent-child structure in your analytic plans. And then we also have this analytic account smart button. And with that, we'll create some analytic accounts related to this plan. So we can click on new and give it a name. So for this one, I'll do electricity. And we'll look at the other fields. We can specify a customer here, a reference, or set another currency if needed. As you can see, in this case, we don't need to link it to the analytic plan. Because we use that smart button, it's already pre-filled in. So I'll create three more for our internet, and our gas, and our water. Great. So now to see how the analytic distribution actually works, let's go and create a vendor bill. So I'm going to click new and we'll use our G&E supplier as the vendor. And down here, we'll add a line for the gas. So the analytic dis distribution will go into the utilities and select gas for our analytic uh, account. And then we can make sure that it's set to 100% for this line because all of this line wants, should go to that analytic account. And now we can actually create a model of this. We can create a new analytic distribution model. And that's going to automatically apply this distribution when we use the defined criteria. So we'll keep the partner and the product, but we don't need to select any other criteria like the partner category, account prefix, etc. We can save and close. And now when we create a new line for gas, we can see that the analytic distribution is automatically updated accordingly. So the next time that we create a vendor bill for this vendor and with this product, Odoo will automatically set the distribution for us. 
So we can get rid of this duplicate line for now, and we'll add a new line for electricity. And we can set it right here. Again, leave it at 100% for this line. Now we'll set the build date and confirm. And note that this is where there would be an error message if the analytic plan was mandatory and we didn't add the distribution to the vendor bill. And in mandatory applicability, the sum of the analytic distribution of a single journal entry line must be 100%. But here we're all set. And what if I want to update multiple vendor bills or invoices that are already confirmed? Is that possible? Another great question, Anne-Francoise. So it's not actually possible from the vendor bills list view because you can't update it once it is a confirmed vendor bill or invoice. But don't worry, you can change it in the accounting menu if we go to journal items and here we can mass edit them. So what we're going to do is first just group by our partner and then we are going to search because we only want to update the lines that hit the expense account. So we'll search for our expense account there. Now we can just open up our internet supplier, for example, and we can mass set the internet plan for or internet account for our utilities plan. And we can confirm and they're all set. So we can also have a global view of all the analytic items in the accounting menu here with analytic items. And here we can group them by their analytic plans, so by utilities, for example. And it's also really useful to look at these in a pivot view so that we can see what it would mean in terms of amounts. So that's it for this video. Be sure to check out our budget management video to see how analytic accounts tie into financial planning and forecasting. This has been your pal Dow. I'll see you in the next one.